Ah, they're coming from the left. This is actually not too good. Okay, I'm gonna get another pike rat right here. That's pretty much all I can do, unfortunately. Uh, I could uh, go for discarding five random cards. Don't think I need to level up my leader any further at this point, though. All right. Oh, 140 gold. Yes, I will indeed take that. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to Rattropolis. And if you'd like to check out the game, there's a link in the description. I picked this up in the Steam Winter Sale and uh, I actually really like this game. I feel like it has a huge amount of surprising depth. However, I've only played one game so far and I wanted to show you a game uh, relatively quite far along in its progression because it does take quite a bit of time for us to get to this point in one particular game. Now, this is a combination of roguelite elements, tower defense, city building, and deck building. And there's a number of different events here as well that you're going to have to go through and you can get a wide variety of random benefits or indeed hindrances as a result of that. As news of your settlement spreads, wild rats from all around began to gather looking for food and safety. Leader, you must realize these rats have abandoned civilization and returned to a more primitive state. They are dirty and they are dangerous. We are not required to feed these rats. Do we really need to accept them? All right, so you then get an opportunity to get the slum card, which allows you to get an additional ratizen. I will explain a little bit about how these things work as we go forward here, um, because I, I kind of understand how to play, but obviously this is roguelike as well. So I would assume that there's going to be something different in the next playthrough too. But anyway, I'm perfectly happy to get this slum because that's going to increase our maximum ratizen limit by two, which would enable me to have two extra workers to be able to either make those workers into a guard or some kind of fighting unit or to use them as workers to gain even more money because you gain gold and you also gain taxes from having houses and things like that. And then you also have caravan guards and things that you can summon out the front here. So you can see here that I have a various amount of different defenses and you can expand these defenses by doing this. And then I can build that up and running and there you go. Ah, now we have another one. All right, the new settlement is growing at a tremendously fast pace. I was worried that if I continue to expand this fast, I would run out of troops. Just then a flustered scout rushed in. Captain, we've expanded our territory so much that those left at home are becoming restless. We have to deal with them. All right, so now this is this is a bit of an issue here. I'm I'm not entirely sure what to do. I don't really want to lose three ratizens, which would be uh, pretty problematic. I don't really want to lose all my gold because I have over a thousand gold, which would be terrible. So I'm going to just say a minus three second wave period. That basically means that waves will be coming just that much faster because there are waves of enemies that will appear over time. We're going to move all these guys over here to the this boundary and hopefully we can uh, try to prevent our people from potentially dying. Ooh, the night, the night watch just literally died instantly. Now, thankfully, I have a pretty significant amount of guards in this area. So I shouldn't have too many difficulties dealing with these guys. Uh, at least I can only hope that to be the case because, uh, yeah, we might have some issues there. But I have a number of other people over here, too. And you can also build a number of different structures. And these structures have different effects that will either give you a benefit or a uh, periodic effect that will happen over time. So we're going to just get the stone skin card. I personally like the stone skin card a lot. Basically what it does is if you use it on a particular group of units, then you will give them extra armor and indeed protection from damage which is going to make things very easy. Now, bear in mind, uh, you can draw cards every 15 or so seconds. You can also draw cards or redraw for a cost. So if you have a lot of money, then you're going to be able to draw cards more often. Obviously, I don't really like doing that. So I just wait for the timer. But anyway, uh, we can repair things. We can build a slum if we want to. Can I actually have, do I have the space to build it? Yep, there we go. I can actually build it right there. That does decrease my tax rate a little bit, but it increases the amount of ratizens that I have, which enables me to build more guards 
and there's also Golden Company here. The Golden Company is absolutely fantastic, as you can no doubt tell. It has 145 armor, which basically makes it insanely difficult for enemies to take out. Now, now here's the inn. The inn as well has uh, something that it also helps you with. The farms that I've also built also give you extra gold every two minutes, as far as I'm aware. So that's very nice. We also have a new event going on here too. All right, we must go back to basics to establish strong urban planning. Two experts have brought you plans for the city's future. The bureaucrat sighs as he takes a glance at the plans. Hmm, the problem is that we can only do one of them at once. All right, so we can get a random economic card or a random building card. Well, um, I, I think a random building card. Ooh, yes, the bazaar. And also waves do tend to drop treasure chests as well and there's also a merchant that appears periodically too there's a gold tower here uh, there's a defensive wall defensive wall is definitely going to be pretty important i will take another farm and i'll take the gold tower too we have a lot of money so i should be able to uh, pretty much spend this however i want then we also have some more stone skin cards as well I actually wonder whether my uh, wall here needs some repairs yes it does so we'll do that i actually gained this card earlier in the run and it doesn't do anything. It's basically just a, um, uh, a detrimental card that um, just gives you... Well, it just basically makes it so that you don't have any useful card in its place, pretty much. That's all, that's all that it really does, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to place this slum down here. We have some cheese. As you can see, cheese currently costs me... Um, 40 gold to use and it gives you plus 30 gold for every cheese card in your hand so if you have a huge amount of cheese then you can use this and you can gain a pretty decent amount and also there's the potter here 10 gold for every card in your hand unfortunately that's not actually any good for me so I'm just going to be going on to the next one and we also have stone skin here this is absolutely perfect so I'm going to be placing this on these guys all of these are going to get absolutely insane bonuses from that we're going to build the gold tower around about there and the grain uses two ratisans to go into labor and then uh, after they have completed their work they give you 60 gold back and it only costs you five gold which is really quite amazing unfortunately it seems oh hold down on this oh cool okay i didn't know you could do that Ah, okay, yes. Yeah, we're going to have to wait for our people just to uh, move back a little bit. It seems like my gold tower is going to get destroyed, unfortunately. There's not really much I can do about that. I have actually been perfectly fine, and the enemy has not been able to penetrate our lines in a very, very long time indeed. But unfortunately, um, they are seemingly pushing very, very hard right now. And I, I don't I don't think we're going to do very well here. I don't think we're going to do very well. So I'm going to actually try to redraw. Maybe I can get another defensive wall up around about here or something like that. There we go. Can I build that? No. It's a wooden stump that I need. All right. Yeah. So this is, this is problematic. This is very, very problematic. I don't think I can actually do anything here. I could build a caravan guard. Uh, there's nothing else I can do. Uh, I'm just going to use this. Uh, farm is basically going to make no difference whatsoever at this point either. Yeah, that's a lot of enemies. That is a lot of enemies. Oh, the Golden Company. Hopefully, maybe they'll help me. Maybe they'll help me a little bit. Uh, caravan guards as well. Let's just raise the tax rate a little bit too. Try to get some more. Uh, try to get some more money, and so we can continue to um, spawn units onto the battlefield. Ah, repairing the wall. Fantastic. That's great. Now, bear in mind that what you can also do is you can remove cards from your deck because obviously having a very succinct deck is very important too you don't want to have a deck that is uh, completely you know shall we say cluttered up with a huge amount of random terrible stuff you know that's basically not what you want obviously but unfortunately it seems as though this is indeed the end for us and this was the reason why i actually wanted to show you the game before i got murdered because i actually thought hey you know what we're getting a bit to the end of the game here i'm at wave 21 of 30 and i kind of wanted to uh, do something there okay so what's this plus 12 bounty i actually don't know what that does let me do that 
I have no idea what plus 12 bounty does, but I suppose we'll see. Territory expansion, that should be uh, quite good. Let, let me actually just try to restore ourselves a little bit here. How are my people doing, by the way? Oh dear, this is, this is actually very bad. I'm going to have to try and restore all of my buildings at the moment. This is very, very harsh indeed. Ah, I'm going to have to just restore the defensive buildings first, I suppose and uh, then maybe get the others up and running. But there's going to be another wave coming from the left side, actually. Oh, interesting. Uh, claw Machine minigame? Oh, cool. Okay, let's do it. Oh, nice. I actually got a, uh, a selection of a bunch of different cards. That's very, very nice. Okay, so I guess we'll live for a little bit longer. Now, bear in mind that uh, cards like the Golden Company, for example, they cost a huge amount, and they only last 60 seconds, as you can see right there. This particular card only lasts 60 seconds. Um, other cards like Caravan Guard, they last infinitely until they die, and so on. So there are mercenaries and things that are going to only last for a certain period. Like, for example, the Night Watch here, they, they last for three minutes, which is pretty good. That's actually very nice. Um, unfortunately, if they do have an adjacent ally or an ally near them dies, then they lose some health, um, or should we say some duration on their time right there. Okay, so we can actually upgrade this card. This is actually an upgrade, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to upgrade raising taxes so that for the next 15 seconds we gain 75% additional, um, additional tax. That seems pretty good. Ooh, seems like the enemy has come in from the left side as well and actually done a significant amount of damage, unfortunately. So this is going to be very, very bad. I'm going to try and redraw cards at the moment. Uh, we can actually even repair with some cards here too. Well, I wasn't able to actually repair all of my uh, structures at the moment. And as you can see, we have enemies coming in. Oh, they're dinosaurs, really? They really want to murder us that badly? Okay, well, yeah, this is, this is going to be problematic. Um, I'm going to have to use repair here, and I can't really do much else apart from play that and then try to redraw for something else. Defensive wall is not going to help. Raising taxes is also not going to help. I have basically been building my deck into an economic powerhouse, so I will have a lot of gold to spend. Unfortunately, that's pretty much all I have. And as you can see, these guys are going to get to my main base, and that is going to be that. I don't think I'm going to be um, surviving for that much longer. But this does now give me an opportunity to show you the roguelite elements uh, present in the game, which I'm I'm actually kind of intrigued about myself because I haven't seen that before. So this is going to be interesting. Okay, so my playtime is a total of 26 minutes, and we're going to see what happens now. So I've I've leveled up. I actually don't know what that means. Got a bunch of achievements apparently as well. You can't see those, I don't believe, but I got a bunch of Steam achievements. And we are also now unlocking some additional cards. Now let's just take a look at these cards real quick. Marauder seems pretty good. It is a mercenary with some pretty high stats. Pretty happy with that. Uh, bargain. Minus 50% ephemeral cost effect to drawn cards. I actually don't know what the ephemeral um, ephemeral statistic is at this point. Scheme is very nice though. As you can see, deal 120 damage to enemies in one range. So in other words, very, very close by. And yeah, that's it. that seems pretty good. That seems, that's actually seeming not too bad. Um, yeah, so we have that, and there you go. And now we're through back to the main menu. So then, if you want to start a new game, this is what you do. And then you have an opportunity to select from new characters. I only had this one guy initially. And bear in mind that every single leader that you have the option to select from has a different ability. Passive and active. So, for example, you have this guy right here who has the deal ability, which has a cooldown of one minute. You discard uh, random cards from your hand and you gain 10% of your total gold per discarded card. So it's very much about uh, prosperity, gaining huge amounts of economic power. Then you have the general leader starting as a guard. He earned a lot of experience as he climbed the ranks to general, manage his soldiers well to defend the settlement. So that's that's actually very cool because plus two ratizen for every obtained military card. So in other words, you're, you're focusing very heavily on military as much as you possibly can. These guys were not unlocked at the beginning of the game. So you're going to have to run through one, one, one run with the merchant guy before you can unlock these other ones. 
as you can see, it says play 10 games to unlock the uh, Shaman Leader as well as win a game to unlock the Navigator Leader. Unfortunately, I didn't win, so obviously I'm not going to get that. And then obviously we have Train here. Grants Ephemeral plus 1 to plus 3 dependent on Leader level to all military cards in the hand. That's actually kind of insane. And then we have the Engineer here. Allows you to play a building card on an identical building to upgrade it. Oh, now that is seemingly quite powerful. Then we also have the scientist who has a minus five seconds to leader ability cooldown whenever you play a skill card and get one of three random ephemeral zero cost skill cards. That's actually really nice too, but I think I'm going to be playing as the engineer here. You can choose between a wide variety of different maps as well. I was playing on random before and you can also increase um, increase population level by winning a game. In other words, that's probably going to increase the difficulty somewhat, even though it was already quite harsh. But let's see how we do. So um, th this is obviously going to be from the beginning of a game, so you're going to have a more, um, uh, shall we say, a slightly easier understanding of what actually happened um, initially in the game, so you can see what's happening. All right, so plus 60 gold, target building unavailable for 30 seconds. Can I do it on this one? Yes, I can. That's pretty cool. All right. So what else do we have here? Uh, yeah, I should have used the potter first, but I'll just use it now. And then we have the pike rat here. I don't know where to place this guy. I guess we'll just place him out here. And then we'll just redraw straight up. Okay, so technically I could use... Discard one random card from your hand and gain a random ephemeral card. Okay, yeah, I, I'm happy just to... Actually, you know what? Let's do this first. Let's do the cheese. Uh, guards are rear flanking and they are coming from the right side so that's going to be interesting let's uh, call them immediately so we gain some extra gold because if you draw if you you know uh, pull the the waves ahead of uh, ahead of time then you're going to be gaining more money from that so that's pretty good these are initially very very simple to eliminate so it shouldn't be too bad and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get some good stuff. Oh, yes, get a house card. Okay, so yes, I would love to be able to use that house card once again. Okay, so not enough ratisons in the city, unfortunately, because as you can see, you only start with five of a limit. That's the reason why you build these houses, so that you gain extra ratisson limit in your city. And without that limit, you're not going to be able to build, or shall we say recruit, additional... Um, additional uh, guards or, or military buildings or anything like that. So it's very, very important. Okay, fire station. That might actually be quite good. 50 damage to a target enemy. I'm going to take ambush, actually, and we're going to go for land tax as well. I feel like both of those are pretty decent. All right, so I'm going to be placing the pike rat over there, and then we'll be redrawing and hopefully getting some more guards. Yes, let's put some more guards over there. Land tax... Probably not going to do that just yet. I'd like to upgrade this house. There we go. It is now upgraded. We're going to go for some grain here. As you can see, that took two ratisons, and they are now busy for about 60 seconds, uh, 50 seconds, actually. All right, so dealing 50 damage to the target, that just killed that guy instantly. So that's really, really useful. And we're going to not use land tax because you can see that it's actually going to cost more than it actually gives us so that is not necessary i'm going to be getting another house card though because as i said i am an engineer i would very much like to try and upgrade my houses as much as we possibly can because that's going to give me just that much more tax so let's see if i can... ah i can only upgrade it twice all right good to know good to know all right so let me can i place this somewhere can i pl can i place this on this no i'm gonna to have to place it on here unfortunately ah, no, on that one there we go place it on that one so when you use rent it basically makes it so that houses do not give you any supply so that's something to bear in mind as well we're going to be playing the cheese because it's going to give me a small amount and we got some guards here okay so i'm gonna try blueprint let's see what happens okay i, I gained a house okay i'm not sure what ephemeral actually does so this is going to be a little bit interesting. Let's play this. Let's play that. Let's get some more guards over here to defend this side. There's some really creepy creatures coming over here. Every single time we kill one of these, they obviously give us a little bit of gold as well. So there's also that. And having escaped the ruined city, we have been looking for a safe place for a long time. Many have decided to become ordinary rats living a wild life. 
Now we are the only civilized rats inhabiting an established settlement. You must secure the last standing settlement. Fortunately, supplies we have scavenged from the city will be helpful. So we can get a random skill card, plus three ratisans, get a random military card. I think a random military card could be quite useful here. So I'm probably going to just do that. Ambush makes no sense, but I will be leveling up our leader because then I can get level two of their ability, which is going to discard two random cards and then get a random ephemeral card. Still don't know what ephemeral does. I wonder whether there's actually a... Hmm. I was hopeful that there might be a, like an encyclopedia or something that would actually tell me what um, what those things are. But I, I assume I can probably do that from the main menu anyway, so it's not really that big a deal. Anyway, let's get another guard up and running here. We can use this to gain a little bit. Ah, here we go. Oh, now the slinger looks really good, as you can see. On hit, he stuns for one second. I like it. I like it. Okay, so let's go for the next one. Land tax is not looking too good right now. Let's not do that. Let's do grain. And I guess we'll do the pike rat. Anyone coming from the right side? Nope, no one coming from the right side. So I guess we're just going to do this. And I'm going to use ambush on the big one. Eliminate it as soon as possible. Wow, the pike rats are actually really, really good. All right. Leader, the families of those killed in battle cry out in sorrow and demand just payment as well as burial rights. Rats clinging to the bodies of the casualties of war fill the streets in front of the town hall. Their demands are shared by many, but we're currently short on funds. What should we do? Alright, so you can remove one cart, which is highly advisable if you want to build a deck that is much more optimized. Because as you saw in my previous game, I was not really having a good idea as to what I should really be building because it was my first game. I basically just took cards that I thought looked good and that was pretty much it. I had no real, you know, hindsight about things or uh, should we say um, no real uh, idea of what I was doing basically. But I'm going to take plus one leader level here because I'd like to actually try to focus on that instead we're going to get a blessing card there as well i'm gonna be uh, pretty thankful for this hopefully <laughs> he, yes hopefully he says all right so let me just do this there's a merchant coming and there's a blessing permanent minus two cost to selected card uh, i think ephemeral means that it doesn't actually come up again i think it is literally just a one use kind of thing anyway we're going to be taking Another slinger might actually be quite fun. Add one scorpion? Single use, piercing attack, slow attack speed. That actually sounds pretty fun. Let's do that. Let's do the defensive wall. And that's pretty much all I can do, unfortunately. So uh, let's do some grain because that's going to give us a little bit of gold after some time. And let's do rent as well. Now we have no more ratisans, unfortunately. And we're also going to be uh, to selected card. Oh, you can actually, ch wow, okay, you can actually choose. This is kind of crazy because what I can do is I can use this on land tax and that is basically going to make it a zero cost card. That is some pretty insane stuff right there. All right, so I'm going to build the Scorpion Factory round about here. We're going to get some enemies from over to the left and uh, yeah, this guy is not going to really do that much for us i don't think i can use ambush on him as well oh never mind apparently he died instantly okay well that's good not too bad then and i'm going to be using blueprint here to just get some random ephemeral cards Ooh. okay this is <laughs> this is actually terrible i don't have enough gold to be able to use these so i uh slows down enemies passing through this is cloaked as well so can I actually place this anywhere I want? Spare slots inside your territory. Yeah, yes. Unfortunately, that is not really going to work out too well for me. So I'm probably not going to do that. Let's level up my leader once again and we'll just redraw. Yeah, it seems like ephemeral cards basically just don't, um, don't stick around. Let's just say that. They don't stick around at all. All right. So let's just build some more wear rats because we're getting some... Uh, we oh, we're getting a, a pretty big wave from the right here let's uh, play land tax because that's a free 25 gold right there and i'm going to be playing ambush on i can't play it on this guy just yet as you can see when you draw a card that is a damaging card or a helping card time actually slows down which in my opinion is very cool i think that really helps 
uh, make things just that much easier. Okay, so Scorpion, we're going to be placing that round about here. Apparently, it's out in the front. I'm not a big fan of it being out in the front, to be honest, but it is a piercing weapon, so hopefully it's going to do quite well. And we're going to just play this first, play the cheese. Defensive wall is going to be quite important, so let's get one of those up and running. And a legendary card. Ooh, now that sounds pretty fun. Oh, look at that. Plus 50% damage to all combat buildings. That seems pretty cool. Oh, the ruins look much better, though, in my opinion. I think I'm probably going to take ruins at this point because 120 seconds, only two minutes, and you can upgrade one random card. I like that quite a bit. So we're just going to do this. Uh, let's get three house cards. I think that's going to be much better than the one advisor, at least in my opinion. And now we have another event here as well. We're going to be taking plus one leader level as I, I'm just going absolutely crazy on leader level at this point, which is probably not even the, a really good idea, but we're going to do it nevertheless. And we also now have the ability to get some more grain here. We can get some more rent. There we go. And place another house. I uh, don't have enough gold. But hopefully we will in just a second. Because you gain taxes every five seconds in the game. Just so you know. Anyway, let's let's draw some more. Ah, there's the ruins. Fantastic. Okay, I don't have enough for that at the moment. But hopefully I will soon enough. Uh, are they coming from the... Ah, they're coming from the left. This is actually not too good. Okay, I'm going to get another pike rat right here. That's pretty much all I can do, unfortunately. Uh, I could uh, go for discarding five random cards. Don't think I need to level up my leader any further at this point, though. All right. Oh, 140 gold. Yes, I will indeed take that. Thank you very much. And we will now take one of these and we'll place the scorpion out here. And we're also going to be building the ruins. Let's build the ruins over here, I guess. That's going to take two minutes, as you can see. And we can get 60, so it's going to give us about 20 gold, which I suppose is okay. And then we'll build another slinger over here. Because there's going to be... Oh, there's two waves, actually, coming from both sides. So this is going to be somewhat problematic. Let's use land tax. That's going to give me 35 gold for free, basically, which is really nice. And then we'll just play this. I should have played that first, by the way. Should have definitely played the Potter first. It makes all the sense in the world to do that. And you also have the Merchant here as well. A Lurker. Cannot be targeted by enemies. I like it. Oh, it's 306 gold. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to utilize that at all. Ooh, that's kind of unfortunate. Okay, I guess I'll just go for a defensive wall then. Because I think that's probably going to be quite useful for us. There's an ambush. Going to use that against this guy. And now we have rent coming in here as well. So let's just use that. Let's use... I, I can't... Uh, yeah, I can't, can't do grain right now because I only have one ratison still available for us. I'm going to construct another defensive structure over here. we got some more... Um, more... Uh, more people coming up and uh, some some more cards available too, which is always nice. And, ooh, a shield master advisor that's going to give me plus one armor to allies i am perfectly happy to take that thank you very much so yes that is sounding very nice now we also have another scorpion available here we need two ratisons to be able to utilize that unfortunately so we're just going to move these guys over here and i now have enough so i'm going to place another scorpion around about there and then we're going to use some more grain and this is basically how it goes. This is how the game plays. And obviously you get to decide on which leader you want and the leader that you select decides on your combat style and uh, decides what kind of, you know, gameplay you want to uh, enact for the most part. And so far I am having a whale of a time. I couldn't put the game down. I actually thought to myself, I'm just going to play through the tutorial real fast and see how it is and I didn't even you know that's the funny thing I didn't even buy this game because I wanted to play it on the channel I was literally just buying it because it looks cool and it looks like something that I I like because I like these kinds of games I like roguelikes I like tower defense I like city building and I also like deck building all those kinds of games I love those 
I, you know, City Skylines. I love that game. I, you know, I like that a lot. I like, um, you know, Slay the Spire and uh, Tainted Grail. You know, all those roguelike deck building games. And this just culminates all of that, with the exception of obviously uh, City, City Skylines being um, a little bit more complicated in the city building aspect, of course. But still, I think it is. Uh, it's looking, it's looking really, really nice, and I like it a lot. I like the aesthetic as well. I like the fact that they've made it, uh, that rats are defending here. And um, what are we going to do? Uh, I'm going to get a blessing card, I think. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to build another one of these guys, and we have another scorpion available. So, wow, we, we just, we have so many don't we? We have so many of these things, don't we? Well, this is pretty cool. Anyway, I'm just going to call for these guys ahead of schedule. And we'll just redraw. Aha, uh -huh, hello there. We're going to get some more ruins. Have I already built the ruins once? I think I have. And there's another blessing. Oh, fantastic. That's going to reduce the cost of something by 20, which is really, really good. So I'm actually going to be taking... Uh, I'm going to be taking the Potter, I think, because it's 17 at the moment, and that's probably the greatest value that I can probably get out of it. Slinger level 2 is going to stun enemies for 2 seconds. Bear in mind that the Ruins will upgrade a card, random card, shall we say, every 2 minutes for free. After you've built it, obviously. So it is extremely, extremely useful, in my opinion. Also, the Potter, now look at this, is a zero-cost card. And I'm going to get 50 gold for free. Really, really nice. The Merchant was quite difficult to, uh, uh, to run out of money with, basically. So that was the main reason why I was having issues with that. I'm going to build another another Ruins here. We're going to build a land tax. Uh, well, not build a land tax. We're just going to play that. And there's actually a uh, treasure chest over here that was going to disappear. Let's get a legendary card. And what else do we want to get? I'm going to get another ruins. You know what? I'm going to get another ruins. I'm going to try and upgrade my cards like no one's business. Oh, yeah. That seems like what we're going to do. And there's a merchant here. I have 200 gold only, so it's probably not going to... Hmm, I'm not sure about this, actually. Every 30 seconds, launch a vine that slows down enemies by 40%. That actually sounds really good. Warren sounds good. I don't have any farms, actually, right now, so it basically makes no sense for me to do that. Defensive wall might be actually pretty good, and now I'm basically out of money once again, which is pretty awful, isn't it? Yeah, every single time this guy comes along, I'm always out of money. What a terrible, terrible individual he is. He just completely takes all of it. All right, so I'm going to call this first um, relatively quickly because that means that I'll gain some more cash and I could always use the cash. Need to build more houses, unfortunately. <sighs> yes, what a what a problem, eh? What a problem. Yes, weasel pirates are now attacking. Ah, yes, very nice. Okay, so there's a treasure chest. We can now get another blessing or we can level up our leader. I haven't really used my leader ability in quite some time, so we're probably just going to leave it the way it is. Can't build any more people. Can't build any more people. I'm going to use this because I need to get rid of these um, these detrimental cards. And we're going to just build another a little bit of a defensive structure in the distance there. And then just tell these guys to go over there. There we go. Now we also have another event going on too. Ah, get the egg card. Single use. After 120 seconds, add an egg level 2 card to your hand. Okay, I actually have no idea what that does, but I am intrigued as to find out what it actually is. Anyway, that's probably going to be it for this episode. If you'd like to check out Ratropolis, it is currently on sale, and um, you can check it out through the link in the description. I haven't been sponsored or paid or anything like that to play this game. I literally just thought it seemed cool, and I wanted to show it to you. That's pretty much it. Anyway, I'll see you next time.